My name is Philip Pericotieno. I'm the executive director uh, for an organization known as Men for Gender Equality Now, based in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, what social movements are you part of, and how would you define your activism? Uh, right now, uh, currently as a person, one, uh, I'm part of the Men Engage uh, movement uh, back in Kenya, and uh, as an activist, I've been engaged in this process since uh, the last eight years. I've been working on uh, issues uh, to do with ending gender-based violence and the spread of HIV and AIDS for actually more than more than eight years since 2003. Yeah. Uh, would you say that you are part of the women's movement or a gender justice movement? I would say it's more of a social justice movement. Uh, which, which, which also brings on board both men and women and, and uh, I, I subscribe to any and as far as rights are concerned, women's rights are human rights and therefore men's rights are human rights and all, all of them are equally important. Uh, what are you trying to change in your work and activism? Uh, in my work I'm trying as much as possible to get men involved in the processes of uh, working towards gender equality. Because of a, period of, a long period of time, men have been uh, on the periphery of activism and they think that this is, there's nothing in, them, in, in this process for them. But we want to change that and uh, make them realize that when, when women are free, men are free also. And because uh, we are trying to create a peaceful world, a social uh, justice for everyone, both men and women, and including children too. Uh, what are you doing leads men to behave differently? Sorry, may I get that again? Uh, what are you doing mm -hmm. in terms of your work and activism mm -hmm. leads men to behave in a different way? First and foremost, uh, if you want to engage in this process and to include men and to involve men, you must be uh, a role model in the first place. Uh, you must walk the talk as a person. So therefore, what I do as a person is trying to show people that uh, when, when you behave differently towards women, when you respect women, and, and actually that's the... the, the, the crux of the matter, whereby you tell men to respect women, because when we respect women, therefore we, uh, we respect their rights, we respect them as human beings, we look at them as fellow human beings and not as people from another, another, another planet or so. So we tell men to uh, be part and parcel of uh, creating a, 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 a social, uh, socio-economic uh, welfare society where people, people's rights are respected. Because I, I think that's not one thing that we really need to emphasize. Uh, do you see difference between working with young men and older men? Indeed, indeed, there's a big difference. It's it's uh, young men embrace change easily. Older men are deeply entrenched in their cultural, institutional uh, uh, perceptions, and therefore trying to change them takes longer period of time as opposed to trying to change younger people. Mm -hmm. who are more uh, uh, embracing when it comes to issues of change. Uh, in your opinion, what are the challenges and tensions between women's movements and other social movements? I think the greatest challenge has always been men who are working towards gender equality are seen as uh, uh, trying to uh, take that which belongs to women and therefore it's us versus them and that, that has been a very big challenge. And on the other hand, when you're working with men and you're trying to engage with men, they're telling you that, oh look, you are a weak person and therefore you, you advocate for women. Uh, they don't see sense in you trying to tell them that gender equality is not about women, it's about both men and women, uh, so to speak. Because until women are liberated, men are not going to be liberated. And I think that, that that's the greatest challenge that we are having. And, uh, in terms of uh, other, other social movements, I think little resources are, uh, are set aside for engagement of men in the processes and that, that, that's something that is very, uh, very worrying if it continues. What do you like to see happen to address these tensions and challenges? I think we need to create space for men and women to be able to sit on a round table and discuss these issues. Uh, we vent out, we point fingers, and we, we, we come to uh, a consensus. If we all put our, our issues on the table, then it's easier to address them. So that th those fears, suspicions, and uh, uh, competitions may, not, may, may be dealt with in a more progressive manner, rather than 
uh, people dealing with them undercover. I think they need to be unraveled. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and most so we need to deal with stereotypes that are uh, uh, we have towards women or stereotypes towards men. We just need to uh, unpack them and talk to, uh, talk about them in a more open space. Uh, do you know of an examples where movements have worked well together? What can we learn from those movements? Uh, I think for, for me, I would say um, like Men for Gender Equality now is an organization that was formed by a women's movement, a women's organization. And therefore the realization they had that they can never work alone as women uh, to be able to address conclusive or comprehensive issues of gender-based violence. For me, that was a, that's a very good example that even a male's movement was actually started by a men's organization. So back back in Kenya, uh, because uh, Megen was started by Feminet. Feminet is African Women's Development and Empowerment uh, Communications Network, which to me is a good example of how then men can work together with women to, to address these issues.